Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our Bible study. Yesterday, we concluded uh, in the end of chapter 15, where Paul and uh, Barnabas had a bit of a contention, and, and so they separated, went their different ways. Paul took Silas, and Barnabas took John Mark, who had left them earlier. So what we have here is two missionary groups going out instead of one. Now, in chapter 16, 17, and 18, in the first part of chapter 18, we have what we know as the second missionary journey. And uh, in the second missionary journey, the very first part, we find that there's a man named Timothy, young preacher, young man named Timothy that joined Paul. And um, his mother was a Jew and his father was a Greek. Now, the significance of Timothy is later on, he is going to become a pastor and Paul is going to write two letters to him. And we'll talk about that later on, first and second Timothy. But in verse number six of chapter 16, the, uh, the, the spirit forbade him to go to Asia and then verse seven to Bithynia. And, uh, but when the Lord closes one door, he usually opens another door. And this is what happened. While he was at Troas in verse number eight, uh, uh, he had what we call a Macedonian call. He had a vision of a man saying, come over here, come to me. We need you, you know, and you can read that. And uh, so he uh, left uh, uh, there at Troas and went to Philippi, which is in Macedonia. Now, while he was in Troas, there's some significance that uh, uh, the verbiage here in verse number 10, you will notice uh, that Luke, the writer says we, and he begins to use the word us, which means that Luke joined them there in Troas and went to Philippi. Uh, you can see also that that verbiage changes after uh, Philippi and most likely Luke was not with him. He stayed there in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, Philippi. So in verse number 16, verse uh, uh, and following, uh, Paul and Silas, uh, because of uh, delivering a slave girl from demons, and she was bringing profit to some people there uh, in Philippi, some men, and they uh, delivered her and they ended up persecuting Paul and Silas and put them in prison. Now, we know the story about Paul and Silas being in prison. They were singing and as they were singing, uh, you know, the, whole, uh, the, the there was an earthquake and, and the gates fell open and the doors came open and, and so on. And, and the jailer uh, was going to kill himself and Paul and Silas stopped him. And, and there's a statement that the jailer said that I think is significant and important for all of us. He said, what must I do to be saved? That is a great question, my friends. What must I do to be saved? And Paul in chapter 16, verse 31, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your household. My friends, if you're here and watching us and you don't know exactly what you need to do, I wanna just tell you, you believe on the Lord and you confess your sins and you will be saved. You gotta trust him and believe him and choose to follow him. And so then after Philippi, they went to, in chapter 17, they they went to a place called Thessalonica. And in Thessalonica, they uh, received some persecution. I want to read verses five and six. Uh, but the Jews were jealous and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities shouting, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. You know, they were, they, what, a, what an honor to have them say, these men have turned the world upside down. That's a challenge for you and I. I, I would, would desire with all of my heart that people could say that I turned the world upside down or this congregation turned the world upside down or you, you turned your community upside down. You brought, uh, you brought, uh, uh, you got people's attention. You know, so this is what's happened. They're getting people's attention now. They were, of course, persecuted uh, for righteousness sake. Jesus has said that earlier is uh, that, that this was gonna happen, but what an honor. Honored. And they came, the mob came and came against them. And there was persecution in Thessalonica. They left there and went to Berea. And after Berea, he left and went to, Paul did, and left and went to Athens. Now he left Timothy and Silas in Berea. Uh, and he went to Athens and ministered there. 
And then in chapter number uh, 18, verses 1 through 11, Paul goes down to Corinth. And while he was in Corinth, uh, Silas and Timothy arrive and, and is there with him. But I want to close this morning by reading uh, verses 8 through 11. Christmas, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord. This is in Corinth now. They believed in the Lord. And, and uh, uh, together with the, his entire household and many of the Corinthians hearing Paul believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent for I am with you and no one will attack you to harm you for I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Now, let me say that this uh, vision was for Paul at that first specific time. And the Lord was gonna protect him there in Corinth. Now in other places he received persecution, but the Lord assured him that while he was in, Por uh, in Corinth, uh, you see he, had, he was in, uh, uh, in, in Philippi and then Thessalonica and th in Thessalonica he caught a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, 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 persecution in Philippi, he was in prison. In Berea, the scripture said that they came down from uh, Thessalonica and they ran him out of Berea and so everywhere he went people were persecuting him and running him out of the town but in Corinth the, the scripture says he had a vision that he's going to be okay in Corinth uh, but I want to say this to you my friends uh, that God if he is with us he is for us who can be against us he never leaves us nor forsakes us and in this culture in this time in which we live, we can't be quiet. It's no time for us to stop preaching the gospel and stop declaring the good news. Uh, we have to declare there's so many people in our town, in our community, in our world, uh, uh, in our country that, that they need to hear some good news. They need to hear the hope. And just as the Lord said, don't be afraid to, uh, to go, but go on speaking and do not be silent. Uh, and I challenge you today to do the same. Go on speaking. Do not be silent. Uh, you know, uh, we, we must proclaim the word of the Lord. We must be a spokesperson for God. And so I encourage you to do that. And he stayed a year and a half there. And while he was there, he had, you remember Silas and, and Timothy came from Berea and uh, he was asking, uh, you know, uh, uh, about them. They were reporting what had, had take pl uh, taken place. Well, anyway, he wrote his first two books uh, uh, to the Thessalonians, the first and second Thessalonians. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, but let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for those that have watched today. And Lord, I pray that in the midst of the confusion and the culture around us, when there's so many uh, opposition to this gospel, may we not be afraid. May we be firm and give us the boldness, the power of the spirit to stand up and speak hope to this world that needs hope and let us be a light uh, that shines in the darkness and we love you in Jesus name amen God bless you we look forward to seeing you tomorrow bye bye